extra extra we're back with another entry today's topic good deeds unnoticed brilliant rappers genius rappers such as bankroll fresh were taken from us through the acts of murder and gun violence here in north america recently another talented artist by the name of king von from chicago's O block was slain as well Talented beyond comprehension, another African-American artist by the name of Mo3 will go on to fall into the same category. Let's not forget about the late great Nipsey Hussle and the late great Pop Smoke. Oh yeah, there's some powerful niggardry at work here. My sentiments exactly, Uncle Ruckus. So let's change gears. Let's meet a man by the name of Trader Truth. Frazier Othel Thompson III, better known by his stage name, Trader Truth, is an American rapper, songwriter, record executive, and activist from Houston, Texas. Embarking on a musical career in 1998, he soon established himself as a prominent member of the Texas hip-hop scene with his solo debut, Losing Composure. Born July 3, 1980, age 40 years, Houston, Texas. That's right, Trader Truth has a musical side, but he's also an activist, as the research elaborated on. He's not a North American creation, a N-word, the one that run around smoking up blunts and sagging their pants and only cares about rapping you some fight music and rapping you some drug dealing. That's not Trader Truth. He's philanthropic. Let's get into the article. Trader Truth drops the music video for Lyric Forever in honor of Lyric Chanel. Earlier this month, Lyric Chanel passed away following her battle with brain cancer. Her journey touched so many people around the world. One person she was able to build a bond with was Trey the Truth. Taking on the role of her uncle, Trey used his platform to help tell her story as well as be there for her and her family. He recently dropped a song and music video for Lyric Forever in her honor. While talking about the song and video's release, Trey said, I want to say, I hope you enjoy it, but you know it's a bittersweet situation. Some of it will make you happy. Some of it will make you sad. But the reality of it is, I'm still riding for young Chanel. End quote. Trey the Truth is known for always lending a helping hand to anyone who may need it. So it was no different when he and Lyric Chanel first came into contact with each other. He eventually developed a close bond with her and her family that they instantly became family themselves and he took on the role of her uncle. When she unfortunately passed away, Trey expressed the pain that he felt and said, quote, Tears ain't stopped falling yet. I felt I ain't even know how to cry no more. You crush me, baby girl. Unc love you. End quote. As he shared with his followers some of his fondest memories with Lyric. Check out Trader Truth's music video for Lyric Forever. See, there's a difference between a black man and an N-word. Trader Truth is definitely not an N-word doing philanthropic acts like this. He's a true activist in my book. And that's why I have to bring you guys another article concerning Trey the Truth and his philanthropic active deeds. Trey the Truth hands out $1,000 to 10 families to help with rent. Man, families are struggling during the pandemic and Houston rapper Trey the Truth is going above and beyond to help. Houston. The Relief Gang is at it again. This time, Houston rapper Trey the Truth is helping families with rental assistance. Some lost jobs during the pandemic and others are single parents just trying to survive. Trey the Truth said he wanted to make sure families don't get evicted. Quote, if you don't have a comfortable place to lay your head for you and your kids, you can't necessarily even think about work. End quote, Trey said. Quote, just grateful there's still people out there that care. We are all hurting in some way right now. End quote. Recipient Tara Wallace said, 
The relief gang got 500 applications and selected 10 families. They each got $1,000. Over here at Jonda's Journal, we're neither white nor black nationalists. We're neither white nor black supremacists. All we do is shed views and information concerning the jaundice lens of the oppressor and how it gives the oppressed an infirmity mentally or physically. That's all we do over here at Jaundice Journal. And we also report on the positive deeds of people in North America as well as the negative deeds of the citizens of North America. Negative Deed Alert. COINTELPRO. Abbreviation derived from Counterintelligence Program. 1956 through 1971 was a series of covert and illegal projects conducted by the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, aimed at surveilling, infiltrating, discrediting and disrupting domestic American political organizations such as the Black Panthers, ladies and gentlemen. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover issued directives governing COINTELPRO, ordering FBI agents to Quote, expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, or otherwise neutralize, end quote, the activity of these movements and especially their leaders. Under Hoover, the agent in charge of COINTELPRO was William C. Sullivan. Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy personally authorized some of the programs, giving written approval for limited wiretapping of Martin Luther King's phones, quote, on a trial basis for a month or so, end quote. Hoover extended the clearance so his men were, quote, unshackled, end quote, to look for evidence in any area of King's life they deemed worthy. Two of these objectives of COINTEL reads as follows. Prevent the rise of a messiah who could unify and electrify the militant black nationalist movement. Malcolm X might have been such a messiah. He is the martyr of the movement today. Martin Luther King, Stokely Carmichael, and Elijah Muhammad all aspire to this position. Elijah Muhammad is less of a threat because of his age. King could be a very real contender for this position should he abandon his supposed obedience to white liberal doctrines, nonviolence, and embrace black nationalism. Carmichael has the necessary charisma to be a real threat in this way. Another COINTELPRO objective reads as follows. Five, a final goal should be to prevent the long-range growth of militant black organizations, especially among youth. Specific tactics to prevent these groups from converting young people must be developed. Okay, boys and girls, does anyone know why Jonda's Journal brought up the COINTELPRO objectives slash initiatives? Not you, Ralph. Put your hand down. Simple and plain is purely to inform you, the viewer, of North America's deep, deep hatred for young militant black revolutionaries. They fear unity among the young black men. If these young black hip hop artists would realize and snap out of it that North America hates them in their unified, pure form, then they wouldn't die at early ages. That's my take on all of this. Trader Truth is 40 years old, relatively young, and instead of promoting gun violence and nonsense, he's out here helping sick children. That's unheard of at his age. That's unheard of in the hip hop community, but it's not going to go unnoticed over here at Jonda's Journal. You know what time it is. This is the part of the journey, unfortunately, where we part ways. Leave me a comment in the comment section below because you know I value you guys' opinion. What do you think about J. Edgar Hoover and the COINTELPRO initiative slash objective? What do you think about Trade the Truth? Have you been aware to Trade the Truth's deeds as an activist? What do you think about young hip hop artists that are black males in the hip hop community dying at an early age. Talk to me. I talk back. Do you like what's going on over here at Jonda's Journal? Hit the like button. If you want people to know what you've learned today at Jonda's Journal, hit the share button. I don't mind. And if you haven't already, subscribe. It's a call to duty. Until next time, peace.